okay, it's Lily again, and this is part two of my stay at the hospital. So I was just talking about how um, I was having the swallow test, and then I got the go-ahead that I could drink the liquids, and so that was on day two, and they just wanted me to drink 30 cc's, and that was when I still had my drain in as well. And, um, and I did well. I walked around more, and um, I slept a lot. I mean, the medicine that they would give you for pain made me so tired so quick. And um, it would just basically knock me out, but at least it, it got rid of the pain too. It was uh, Dilaudin, and it was this little teeny tiny pill. First, they had me uh, the first full day that I was there. They had me on an IV drip of it, where you know you get the little thing that you can click, and it just gives you that satisfaction because you can click it as many times as you want, but you're not gonna actually get anything. But once every ten minutes, so you know I was click click click, and. Uh, Eventually I would get it, and then eventually the next day they took that off my IV and gave me, you know, here, take a little sip of water and take this pill. And I'm going, oh god, I have to swallow a pill. This is going to be scary. The pill is like so tiny. It's smaller than the head of an eraser on a pencil. It is teeny. And so that made it good. That made it very easy to take. And they also sent me home with a prescription for that. And you can take one to two every four hours. So during the day I just take one because... I found that with one, I don't get super tired unless I just sit down to relax and watch some TV, then I'm out. But if I'm just kind of not relaxing myself so much and I'm just kind of sitting up doing something or walking around, I'm not like a zombie. But if I take two, I'll find myself starting to doze off. So I take the last uh, dose around like, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. I'll take two just to kind of get me into the zone of, of being nice and comfortable and then I can fall asleep and sleep through the night. And, uh, and that worked out well. Um, basically, that was about it while I was having um, my recovery stay at the hospital. The nurses were great. Everybody was just, it was, I've only had two experiences at hospitals. But this by far was the best experience I've ever had. Um, when I had my lap band, it was just a nightmare. And I was so glad I was only there for like not even 24 hours. I was so happy because it was just so horrible. And this place, the room was clean, the facility was clean. This was at Mass General Hospital. And, um, and now I know why they feel like that the hospitals rank like of the top in the world. And now I know why, because they're just so good there. I felt like I was always having somebody giving me attention to make sure that everything was going well. I had nurses and interns and residents and doctors that were on my surgeon's team and RNs that were on his team. I always had somebody checking in on me and uh, just making sure that everything that went through the surgery was still, you know, healing and recovering properly. All my questions were answered. It just put me at ease, which I thought was great. I mean, I even had them, um, the RN who took my drain out, she even explained to me exactly what she was going to do and what I would feel before she took it out, which was huge for me because I was so nervous about the drain coming out because it's like inside your guts and they're just pulling it out but that was okay it wasn't a, it was just a very strange feeling it didn't hurt at all it just felt very weird and it lasts like four seconds and you only processed it by like the second or third second that it was happening that you were feeling this weird thing so i just like kicked my feet a little bit for a second and then it was done and you just felt like oh, i feel so much better it's, it's it's gone now i don't have this weird hanging bulb of guts <laughs> hanging on the outside of me. And, um, you know, and then I went home around, I want to say it was 2 p.m. on Thursday. And I got home and I just kind of relaxed. My boyfriend took care of me. Uh, my mom and my sister came to visit me that night. And I came home and I had these, um, nope, they're over here. These yellow flowers were at my doorstep from one of my close friends. Uh, these colorful flowers my boyfriend and mom brought with some balloons to my room and my other good friend Steven brought me these white um, lilies and sunflowers uh, while I was um, at the hospital and he came to visit me and so it's nice because I came home and I had all my flowers and my dining room smells like flowers it's not like a florist over here and it just makes me feel loved I look at them and I just feel like people really care about me I didn't tell very many people yet that I've had the surgery, and uh, for certain people in my family, I just told them I had my lap band removed. I'm going to kind of just work it out 
at my own pace, when I start losing a lot of weight, I'll just tell them as I feel comfortable that I had lap, I had the lap band taken out and I also had gastric bypass because I just don't want people to judge me. After having the lap band fail for three years, I don't want them to be like, oh, Kelly, don't do the gastric bypass. That won't work either. Look at how the lap band went. Like, I don't want any negativity. So I only told the people that I knew wouldn't say that, which was basically my two close friends, Lisa and Steven, my boyfriend, and my mom and sister. They're really the only people that know the real truth. And uh, and that's okay with me. That's that's fine with me. Oh, and I told one other girl um, that I'm good friends with because she had gastric bypass, and I felt like I could really talk to her about it because she's been going through it for 10 months now, and it's been super successful. So I felt it was a good person to kind of talk to and answer some of the questions that I had because she's been there and done that. And she actually told me that seeing how I struggled with the lap band was one of the main reasons why she went with gastric bypass because she was going to go with lap band first. But seeing how much trouble I had, she decided not to. And I'm just glad that, you know, she did that because I'm kind of against the lap band now. I've seen some people succeed, but I've seen way more people not. And I just feel, I wish that I had done this gastric bypass three years ago instead of the lap band, because I just think I'd be in a better place right now. And that's okay, because I'm young, I'm only 28, I'm still learning, I've got plenty more of my life to live, and uh, and I'm so ready for it to begin now that I'm 28, and I'm on the track to getting to a healthy weight and opening up the doors to do things that I've always wanted to do, like hike and jog and take my dog for a run. And just all kinds of things that I couldn't do before because my weight held me back. I'm really excited to go shopping soon. I still, it's weird, I still haven't fully grasped that I had surgery. Surgery four days ago. And they took out that lapping that I had so much problems with. And they changed me over to a gastric bypass, which is going to make me lose a ton of weight. It still hasn't fully clicked in my head that that all happened just four days ago. Like, sure, I feel like I'm in a lot of pain at times, and I don't feel quite right when I do take drinks of water, which reminds me, I need a sip. But, you know, things feel different, but they don't feel so different. And I don't, I, I might be in denial still, maybe it's going to take me until I drop 20 pounds. But I just feel like, wow, it hasn't fully clicked yet that I've had surgery. And like I said, maybe it's going to take a while before... When I, you know, when I start to actually lose a lot of weight before it really hits me that I'm different for the rest of my life. I have to take these vitamins for the rest of my life. There's probably going to be foods that will make me very ill for the rest of my life. And it's stuff I all expected and knew and was prepared for. But now that I've had the surgery, I don't think it's fully hit me yet. And I mean, I'm so terrified to eat anything right now. You know, I'm not even thinking about food. I'm barely even thinking about drinking. I'm just forcing myself to. But, you know, it's going to be an adjustment. And I'm going to record every step of the way and let you guys know every struggle that I have. And whenever I have uh, problems with, with drinking something, with eating something, with trying something new, with dumping, I'm going to let you guys know about it. Because I'm sure there's many other people who've had the same problem. Or there's people who are thinking about surgery that are watching this and that maybe I can help them to cope with it when the time comes and they have surgery and they may have questions. And really, the whole reason why I'm making these videos is because when I looked, I could not find many people talking about having had lap band, having it removed, and having gastric bypass. So I'm paving new territory here and I hope that I'm helping out people who are struggling with their lap band and want to have a conversion surgery or are just thinking about having gastric bypass and maybe thought about having the lap band but saw these videos and saw that it isn't as easy as it seems and that there are more complications um, just with the band itself and trying to eat and maybe they end up getting gastric bypass instead because of it and learn from the mistakes I made for three years trying and hoping that the lap band would just work itself out and it never did but anyways that's about all I have to say for the past four days. I mean, I made three videos here, so you guys have a lot to watch. I've covered a lot of ground. And um, like my videos, subscribe to them, recommend them to other people, and keep watching because there will be another one probably next week when I meet with my surgeon for my one-week follow-up. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend.